2020 will go down in history as the year COVID-19 dominated world news. The global coronavirus, coronavirus pandemic. pandemic. COVID-19. But what if I told you that the next pandemic will likely be 10, maybe even 50 times worse? Not just because the death rate of a future viral outbreak could be much higher than COVID-19, which we know can happen, but because of a separate issue, antibiotic resistance. Antibiotic resistance is when bacteria that cause infections become resistant to antibiotic drugs, threatening us with the return of early 20th century healthcare, where infections that we currently view as being trivial become deadly. We're on the cusp of returning to a pre-antibiotic era where strep throat was a death sentence. Let me put it as basically as I can. If we keep producing food the way we do, you're going to get sick with something medicine cannot fix. We've all heard of the Black Death, a 13th century bacterial disease that killed 60% of European citizens and at least 50 million people worldwide. This type of disease can easily be treated nowadays using antibiotics, which were introduced in the 1940s. But for how much longer will they be effective? The World Health Organization is calling antibiotic resistance a global crisis and England's chief medical officer said it was the greatest threat to our civilization. Globally, we're seeing a dramatic rise of multi-drug resistant infections. These superbugs everywhere, resistant to standard and even last ditch antimicrobials. But why as a society are we misusing antibiotics to such an extent? A report published in 2016 shows that roughly one in three antibiotics prescribed to humans by a healthcare system are unnecessary. But the story doesn't end here, because human prescriptions only account for 20% of the antibiotics produced in the world. The remaining 80% go to farmed animals. That's because the conditions in which we farm animals are so terrible that without antibiotics, the majority would die. Take the dairy industry where cows are prone to bacterial infections from overmilking, so routinely fed antibiotics. Or mega broiler farms where millions of chickens are packed on top of each other in highly unsanitary conditions, so fed antibiotics to keep them alive. And the same is true for nearly all farmed animals, including pigs, sheep, and even fish. But the use of animal antibiotics goes one step further still, because most are used as growth hormones to fatten animals up a practice that is illegal in some regions, but still rife. Leading global health experts have warned governments time and again, immediately stop all antibiotic use to promote animal growth. If we fail, the result will be catastrophic. We social distance to minimize the spread of disease. Animal agriculture systematically enforces the opposite. 95% of UK meat produce now comes from factory farms, for example. 99% in the US. The World Health Organization, United Nations and countless other international agencies are in unison of their message. Antibiotic resistance will kill 10 million people per year by 2050 if we continue with our current practices. Every dose of antibiotics administered allows resistance to grow stronger. So for the same reason we don't take antibiotics every single day of our lives, animals shouldn't either. But unfortunately, demand for meat continues to rise, which means we become more and more dependent on intensive farming methods and with it, the use of animal antibiotics. Over the next 10 years, meat production in emerging markets is predicted to drive antibiotic use up by 67%. It's scary that even though antibiotic resistance can be avoided, the odds are so stacked against us. In this golden era of medical innovation, Nobody should die from antibiotic resistance.